You want to see something cool? You know, don't forget to like and subscribe to Gabe and Natalie's YouTube channel. <laughs> I hope that's good. In the daytime, I'm Marinette. Just a normal girl with a normal life. But there's something about me that no one knows yet. Because I've got a secret. I am the pretty Agarian who fights for love and for courage. I am Sailor Jupiter. I'll fill you with friends. It'll leave you numb. My name is Sarasa. I am Ichi's sister. Hey, don't forget about me. I'm Roka. And I am Sarasa's sister-in-law. My name is Kisa Soma. The animal is the zodiac that I symbolize in the sun. Call me Hero Soma. The animal that symbolizes the zodiac is the sheep, and that is me. A fine pleasure to meet you. My name is Kotoko. My name is Amakita Mori. I can transform into Amulet Heart, Amulet Spade, Amulet Clover, Amulet Diamond, Amulet Angel, Amulet Devil, and Amulet Fortune. Hello, my name is Lydia. I can transform into Iris Heart. My name is Bert. I can transform into Green Heart. I am Nico Robin. A treasure hunter. Pleasure to meet you. My name is Kami. I am Ochako Uraka. Let's go! Hey, hey! Nice to meet you! Call me Nejiri Hato! I am Ethan Black Tegno. Pleasure to meet you. What's up, a black star? I am Kaname Chidori. It's a pleasure. My name is Hestia. It's a pleasure to meet you. Hi there, I'm Machi. Nice to meet you. I am called Mula. Be grateful, I'm not giving you any punishment. I am Lava Cell. Pleased to meet you. You can call me Sister Nana. Nice to meet you. I'm My name is No Light. Pleasure to meet you. About us, I'm the Geese of One. And I'm the Geese of Two. Uh, Boruto? My name is Hikaru Shido. I represent the element of fire. My name is Pearl Hoji, and I represent the element of wind. I'm Umi Ryuzaki, and I represent the element of water. Hi, I'm Happy. I'm an XP from Italia and a member of the Fairy Tale Guild. Today, I'm Carla. I am an XP as well, and we are also in the Fairy Tale Guild. Hey there, I'm Wendy Marvel. I'm the Sky Dragon Slayer. My name is Romeo Cumble. I'm the only son of Fairy Tales Mage, my pal Cumble. And I'm a mage of the Fairy Tale Guild. <laughs> I'm Tano Kocho. I am the mermaid princess of the South Atlantic Ocean. Glad to meet you. I'm Rina Toy, and I am the princess of the North Atlantic Ocean. Hiya, I'm Manasu. It's a pleasure. Hi, I'm Nice to meet you. Call me Tony Simotori. Hi. 
I'll reintroduce myself. I am Xiao Mei. I am the narrator of the story you're hearing. on to Season 5C, the endgame arc of the Aggress Saga. Let's review. Miraculous Ladybug Episode 124, oh. Revelations, Lila's Plan Unfolds. This video is for Sayla Victor, Lauren Landa, and Lisa K. Jennings. With that out of the way, let's... Get this party started! Miraculous Fates Revelations. The episode starts with Lila apologizing to her supposed mom, saying that due to the internet in the savannah, she has to go and save a baby rhinoceros and she will call her later and hangs up. Just then, another one of Lila's mothers, who is deaf, walks into the room and asks Lila who she was talking to within sign language. Lila replies that it was her Asian and goes to Sabine's art class. She gets on the bus and uses her acting skills and the fact that her face and voice are used on the Alliance rings to get a free ride. She uses this opportunity to lie and make herself look better to the other passengers. She arrives in front of the school and picks up a coin from the ground and puts it in her purse. In our class, Sabine regards how fast Lila adapts due to their own only being there for a few weeks. Yet feeling like she's a part of the class, Lila credits her, but comments that Marinette doesn't take advantage of all she teaches. Sabine defends Marinette by saying she's already so busy before everyone's alliances are restarting to install for an update. When the update is completed, the portrait changes from Lila to Kagami and Adrian holding hands, introducing themselves as the ones that will make life easier due to them being together and stronger. Lila is shocked and angry at this, but keeps her cool and changes the subject by saying this class has been an eye-opener, so it became tired to her connections to the Aggress brand and the fame that came with it. So she requested this avatar change so she could dedicate herself to painting among her friends. She thanks Sabine, calling her a mother to her and hugs her, and everybody applauds as Sabine smiles. Meanwhile, Gabriel is working on something but feels pain and takes his glove off to check. Revealing the wound from the cataclysm has reached his hand. Natalie enters his office and tells him that there's someone waiting for him outside of the gate, immediately exiting. He opens his camera and sees that his visitor is Lila, saying the avatar change was not in their agreement, saying that she was the face of the Gabriel brand. Gabriel interrupts her and says that she was only in the brand due to an exchange, and the result, the exchange being to monitor Adrian's relationships, keeping him away from bad company. But she ultimately failed, commenting Marinette has been a terrible influence on Adrian, but this meddling gave him an idea, making Adrian and Kagami a media-friendly relationship. Hence why Kagami is the new face of the Gabriel Grant, calling it perfection, and planning to push the false truth until it becomes the truth for everyone, including Marinette. 
Lila asked what's gonna happen to her, so Gabriel answers that she'll be what nor she normally is. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> you won't get rid of me that easily, Mark. In school, Marinette and Adrian are walking in together when they see everyone fawning over the model Adrian and Kagami on the Alliance rings. Adrian tells Marinette that he did not know about this update before their friends come running up to them. Rose worryingly asking if his father knew Adrian and Kagami broke up and that he's with Marinette. Adrian says he knows, leaving Rose confused as to why Gabriel was lying about his love life. Adrian tells her not to worry as the avatars are just pictures and not real to them. Marinette says that they know their own truth, no matter what Gabriel tries to force on them as well as Kagami. The school bell rings and to go upstairs, revealing Lila was watching the whole entire thing all along. Miss Bustier hands back tests, congratulating students until she gets to Chloe and Sabrina, saying that both papers have Sabrina's name on them. So Chloe gets mad at Sabrina as she apologizes, saying that she hasn't slept for several nights as she was preparing cheat sheets for the end of the year exams. Miss Bustier asks Sabrina if she did all of Chloe's homework, while Chloe says that it was just ridiculous that she's expected to do her homework herself, and that she gets Sabrina to copy her handwriting to make her they believe it's her. And this apparently has been going on since Sabrina learned to write. Miss Bustier decides to give Sabrina her real grade on the condition that she promises that she won't do this again, which she agrees to. As for Chloe, Miss Bustier tells her that she's going to need a lot of help as she is likely very behind on work, which Marinette objects to, saying that everyone knows Chloe has been cheating, not showing any effort, and taking advantage of Sabrina for years. Yet the only consequences is that she's getting help. Lila smirks as Marinette continues, saying that all students need help, but not when the students themselves are the problem. Miss Bustier replies that Chloe is falling behind, and that will be punishment enough. Chloe interrupts this and says that she is rich and therefore not like everybody else, meaning she'll never have to work, meaning she'll never have to learn. Telling Miss Bustier that she can keep her support and falling behind. Marinette shouts that Miss Bustier is just too nice to Chloe. Lila also intervenes and says that Chloe should have told her her friend if she had problems from school. Chloe dismisses this to her, saying that school is pointless and it's just a daycare so parents can go to work. While she is going on, Lila sends a message to Chloe. Lila asks Marinette if she already discussed Chloe's problems with the teachers as class representative. Marinette questions why she would do that as she doesn't have any difficulties but privileges. And her proof is how the teachers let her get away with everything, surprising Miss Bustier. Chloe snaps back, replying that they should, just because otherwise her father would fire them from the school system for good, just before finally receiving the message from Lila. While she is checking it, the sender herself understands why Marinette is just being defensive as due to her new romantic relationship with Adrian. She doesn't have time to be a proper class representative. Chloe reads the message aloud. It's saying, let me handle this. I've got this. Confused. Lila offers to replace Marinette as the representative, allowing her to think about herself other than always having to focus on others and betraying their trust. Marinette denies her offer, saying that it's out of the question. Lila stands up and announces that she quit the face of the Gabriel brand, so she could spend more time with her friend, and that she could give everyone the attention they deserve, especially to their issues, including Chloe's. Marinette tells her that she should have ran the election if she wanted to be the representative, but Lila says she was absent on that day, and then claims it was unfair to hold the election when she was absent. She asks Miss Bussier on her thoughts in the matter, who responds by saying she always thought Chloe was a gifted student, and that discovering her cheating was surprising, and that she'll consider rerunning the elections during lunch break. During lunch break, Marinette and Gorilla arrives to the lunch table with Nina, Alia, and Adrian, saying Lila is always up to something no matter what it is. Alia reassures Marinette that she is saying that they'll always believe her, but whenever she tries to accuse Lila, there's been no proof and it's always been a misunderstanding and that she only disliked her due to her being in love with Adrian the day they met. But that's over, now she's together with Adrian, so she doesn't need to be jealous anymore. Nina agrees with everything she said. While Marinette and Adrian are confused and angry, 
Adrian agrees with Marinette and tells the two once again that Lila is a very talented liar, always managing to lie her way out of trouble. Nino says Adrian would always agree with Marinette due to them being in love and that they sound like a real couple. Olya tells him that he doesn't have to defend Marinette, but he's very sweet. Marinette squeezes the hand out of Adrian and tells him that he was right about not being able to speak about the problem openly, as Lila is too good of a liar and that the two will believe him. Going back to Alia and Nino, Marinette comments that holding a class representative vote at the end of the year is dumb, but Alia says there would be no downside to seeing Lila try to get somewhere with Chloe, later admitting that there is a small chance of this happening, but it's worth a try. Marinette angrily leaves to put her lunch away, with Alia following her behind, telling Ladybug accepts help from Scarabella every once in a while. Marinette says that she trusts Alia entirely, but she doesn't trust Lila at all. Alia defends Lila, saying that she's a nice girl and Marinette should at least give her a chance. Meanwhile, Lila, Sabrina, and Chloe are sitting at the same table, with Lila asking if Chloe wants to exterminate Marinette for good and make her lose everything. Chloe agrees, so Lila orders Chloe to always do what she says no matter what. And in the end of this, both of their wishes will come true. Both of them smirk while Sabrina looks worryingly. Miss Bustier looks at the class, also with worry, as they come back in. She announces that the school is a school of fairness. So, if Lila feels cheated by not having been able to participate in the election, they should hold a new one, and thus all grow. She also wishes to invite anybody to run to come to the front of the class. Lila walks down, while Marinette glares at her. Lila withdraws for candidacy and told the truth that Gabriel fired her and Marinette called her an idiot. So she ran to the bathroom. Alia told Marinette that she went too far. Marinette retorted that she did not. Miss Bustier tells her to check up on her, even though she's still the class representative. Marinette went to check up on her arch rival. Lila put her phone down in the locker and went to the bathroom to let Monarch call upon her. Gabriel went into his lair and put on the rings and transformed into Monarch in the lair's window open. And Monarch senses Lila's anger and uses Kalki to voyage the portal and evilize her. The Akuma reached into her alliance ring and she is akumatized into Hoaxer and was granted the power of the Fox Miraculous. Hoaxer equipped with tricks and powers that she wants to get back at Marinette and Gabriel for what she had done. Marinette! It's always Marinette! All my failures are linked to her! Gabriel Agress dismissed me because of her, and it's the same story at school! All I want now is a chance to get revenge on her! Marinette went to check up on the sad arch rival, but she's too late. The acclimatized supervillain told everything will be okay. At the classroom, Pelksar brainwashes everyone at... Miss Bustier's classroom to show everyone that Marinette is a monarch. Mar Marinette transforms into Ladybug. Nino and the Resistance, along with the others, have to catch Marinette along with Miss Bustier, Milan, and Ivan because they don't even wear Alliance rings. Adrian tries to stop them but fails and pushed. Ivan and Milan wanted to help Adrian find Marinette. Clag and Adrian have a bit of a talk and transform into Cat Noir. Ladybug met up with her ally and what's causing with the roughness and found Officer Roger Rankum Creek and removed his alliance ring. Cat Noir suspects that the two of them should remove their alliance ring. Elsewhere, Hoaxer tells her deal followers that she sends that one of them remove their ring and Ladybug and Cat Noir have stolen and made up a fake story that Ladybug and Cat Noir have come from planet Saturn and fart bubbles that destroy the ozone layer. And she then orders them to go to City Hall and catch the heroes and bring them back their miraculous. Marinette! Stop everything, your followers! Remove their ring! Noir have attacked them and stolen it! Revelation! Ladybug and Cat Noir come from the planet Saturn and fire bubbles that destroy the ozone layer! They're hiding on a roof near City Hall. Save the planet, my followers! Catch Ladybug and Cat Noir and bring me back the Miraculous! In his lair, Monarch laughs that their guardian will never escape the Revelation. Ladybug summons a lucky charm and it was a sewing machine and comes up with a plan. She tells Cat Noir to hold off the angry mob after returning to Marinette's bedroom. 
Ladybug can talk to Zalia and freeze her. Alia wanted to know what is going on, but Ladybug silences her, returns to the scene, and he transforms into Marinette, telling Alia that she needed Scarabella to distract Hoaxa. Cat Noir is caught by three firefighters, and Hoaxa is ready to take his miraculous. At the Aggress match, Natalie was doing her work until Hoaxa came on her ring and tells her that Gabriel is an alien who hit his flying saucer on the Pyramid of the Louvre and tells her that he has other secrets hidden inside his house and tells her to send the information with Emily Aggress phone, not her alliance, to deliver them to Lila's phone and then delete any information off of the device. Hoaxa tells her to reveal all of Gabriel Aggress secrets to Lila. Natalie uses Emily's phone to send over everything from Gabriel's past from a french fry shop where his late parents worked with them. Then the menu, his passport's card, working with Harry Cloud, the time working with the bourgeois, and finding the peacock and butterfly miraculous. Well, that was pointless. The contract with Tomoe Tsurugi and then the images from Master Boost tablet from the miraculous spell book. And then Natalie went into the crypt and then took a picture of Emily's coffin and the Grand de Vanilli twin ring. And then she sends them to Lila's phone and erases the images and goes back to normal. Cat Noir was facing the angry mob and helps her as the latter tells her, Does this look like a tete a tete to you, pussycat? Marinette shows up and tells Lila that she's here. Cat Noir receives a text from Scarabella that she is hiding and preparing to cataclysm her ring and distract Hoaxer. And Marinette tells Hoaxer that she's right. Marinette never liked her from the very beginning and always thought she was a liar and this has gone too far this time. Hoaxer pretending to be touched by words and tears deacomatizes herself while Monarch screams and Scarabella does a miraculous ladybug to turn everything back to the way it was. You're right, Marinette. I should have had the courage to do that without resorting to superpowers given to me by a supervillain. I was desperate, but the fact that you're giving me another chance gives me hope. <laughs> Meanwhile... No! Darkwing's fault. Marinette Dupang Chang! It's always Marinette Dupang Chang! You will pay for this! Know your role! Ah, spoiler alert! Back at school, Adrian apologizes and he was wrong and wait until I act at Lila. Marinette says that he was right and did the right thing on Chloe. The two of them promise to expose Lila eventually when the time is right. Chloe and Lila won the election as class representative and Marinette tells Alia that she will find a way to expose Lila's lies as the end card is shown. Epilogue. In the post end card scene, Lila removes her alliance ring and the item is dropped on the floor and then she smashes it with her boot, like how Jesse crushed Dust Tox's Pokeball. She opens her locker and receives images of Gabriel's secrets from Natalie on their phone and says, Your secrets are mine, and soon I'll have your miraculous monarch. Ending the episode. Did you know that? As of April 28th, 2022, last year, the animation for this episode was completed. This does not necessarily include the lighting, 2D effects, or other post-production work. And this is the third Season 5 episode that is not named after a concept miraculous. And the many revelations are shown throughout the whole episode. Lila is revealed to have multiple families and identities, having at least three moms who she keeps away from one another by using lies that prevent them from ever meeting or learning the truth. Besides Mrs. Rossi, an Italian ambassador, she is an unknown mother who thinks she is in Africa helping endangered animals and also a deaf mute mother who communicates through sign language who thinks Lila is an actress that needs to travel a lot. Miss Bristier discovers that Sabrina has been doing all of Chloe's schoolwork for her and that has been happening ever since the both of them learned how to write. Was Sabrina ever learning how to forge Chloe's handwriting? Interestingly, Lila also didn't know how well the miraculous transformations did work if Marinette transformed with all the jewels including the butterfly. She would have looked totally from Monarch, therefore she lied. More about Gabriel's past is revealed. Gabriel's family used to own a french fry shop and that his real name is Gabi Grassetti. Gabriel has known Audrey and Andre Bourgeois since his younger days. He, Emily, and Natalie discovered the Peacock Miraculous and possibly the Butterfly Miraculous together. With it being covered by a thick layer of snow on the mountains of Tibet. Possibly near where Master Fu lost it. As of now, 
Gabriel is an orphan like Bruce Wayne or Batman. Sorry, Kevin. Since his parents passed on. Lila gets to know all of Gabriel's secrets starting from his past, like how he discovered the butterfly and peacock miraculous, his Yosu Tomoe Serugi and the pictures of the miraculous spellbook and ending with Emily's body and the importance of the Grand Divinelli twin rings for him. Adrian realizes the error of his ways of how to deal with people like Chloe and Myla. How too much kindness and giving too many chances can actually make others take advantage of that. With Chloe, he gave her too many chances of changing her behavior, evidence and despair bearing Queen Banana, but always with her not changing at all. After making Marinette look bad and his pleas falling on deaf ears, Adrian officially ends his friendship with Chloe. But he did it in derision due to the latter not apologizing and suspending Sarkleen Wang. And he also ended his friendship with Lila in transmission but off screen due to her not apologizing, also hurting Marinette. With Lila, he didn't warn his friends about her lying in a manipulative nature, thinking that way she would only get angry and want to lie even more without learning the lesson as shown in Chameleon. However, because he waited too long to tell his friends about her, they don't believe him as they think he is only supporting Marinette, who hates Lila's guts, because she is his girlfriend. If they had warned him about Lila soon, she wouldn't have that much control over their classmates. Or it would be because he was afraid that his friends would believe him, even if he did tell them the truth sooner. Lila's actions, along with Chloe's and Felix's betrayals in the former episodes, foreshadows the revelation Adrian will have to face because of his father. It's discovered that Marinette de transformed, causing her sewing machine Lucky Charm to disappear, however, when Scarabella was active. Still, well, she still had it, meaning she could have summoned the same object, or if it didn't disappear. However, as for Ladybug, when Marinette removed Alia's alliance ring, she didn't only free from hoaxers' influence, she also prevented Monarch from using it to track her as she gave Alia her Miraculous, which she could imply that at some point before this, Ladybug and Cat Noir figured out that Monarch wasn't the only one using those rings to not only track them, but anyone with a Miraculous. Lila continues to keep her word, but to make Marinette end up all alone. This time, she decides to take Marinette's role as class representative by manipulating Miss Broussier to hold elections, believing Marinette's love life was preventing her from carrying on her duty. Such as helping Chloe to be her better self, and then she would love to take that responsibility away from her, indirectly painting Marinette as a selfish girl. Therefore, empathizes that by Chloe acting as her deputy to show she can actually change her and later drop out of the elections, pretending it was because Marinette made her feel stupid for believing Chloe could change. While being acclimatized as hoaxer, she makes everyone believe that Marinette is monarch, causing her to become a target to all of Paris. Eventually, Lila manages to become class representative with Chloe as her deputy after Marinette, realizing she can't convince the others of Lila's lying nature, drops out of the election, hoping soon her friends will realize about her true nature. It's revealed that it's been only two weeks until the end of the school year. This is the seventh time Lila gets acclimatized following Volpina, Catalyst, Mayura, Chameleon, and the two off-screen acclimatizations into Volpina as seen in Mr. Pigeon 72. This time, however, she gets akumatized into Hoaxer, her third overall akumatized form of second Fox-themed identity. The miraculous superpower Lila receives from Monarch, being the power of Mirage of the Fox Miraculous, is a reference to her previous akumatization as Volpina, who possessed the exact same power. It's mentioned that Milan and Ivan don't wear alliance rings, which was first seen in Passion. Lila decides to destroy her alliance ring to cut ties with Gabriel Agreste once and for all. And this is the third time Alia transforms into Scarabella following Haxon and Transmission. Lila is one of the few people who successfully de themselves. This is the 16th episode that features a post credit scene following Miracle Queen, Gabriel Agreste, Octagami, Santa Bubbler, Dearest Family, Multiplication, Jubilation, Illusion, Transmission, Perfection, Derision, Intuition, Protection, Emotion, and Pretension. This is the 8th not to feature Gabriel Agress following Multiplication, Jubilation, Derision, Intuition, Protection, Emotion, and Pretension. This is the 15th time where magical charms don't appear since their introduction following Santa Bubbler, Haxon, Ephemeral, Protoneco, Risk, Evolution, Destruction, Illusion, Passion, Reunion, Transmission, Deflagration, Intuition, and Emotion. 
This is the fourteenth time Marinette ends up separated from Tiki following Princess Fragrance, Sandboy, Miraculous Shanghai, Reflect All, Wear Dad, Tommy Buster, Beast, Soul Crusher, Paxon, Dearest Family, Passion, Elation, and Transmission. This is the eighth time Mar Marinette ends up separated from Miraculous, which previously occurred in Ladybug and Cat Noir, Miraculous Shanghai, Reflect All, Beast, Paxon, Passion, and Transmission. This is the thirteenth time where Miraculous has its ownership transferred in the show following Anansi, Reflect All, Desperada, Kwame Buster, Miracle Queen, Queen Banana, Mega Leech, Penal Team, Stripe Bat, Evolution, Passion, and Transmission. But unlike the other instances, Anansi dealt with a holder who couldn't use it. As hoaxer, Lila pulled the same mistake as she did with Hot Moth Illusion in Volpina. Like everyone else, she knew that Hot Moth went under the new identity monarch but didn't know what he looked like. Even though he made a brief appearance out of his lair in Destruction, Philippe only got a snapshot and Alia got a brief live blog of him before he melted the rapes. Making a false illusion of Marinette believing the villain was inaccurate, however, it could be that sometime prior to the episode, Gabriel did reveal himself as the new and improved monarch under the belief that Ladybug didn't have any more traps for him, like Felix. She did figure out Monarch's identity on her own, or he was foolish enough to detransform without knowing she was nearby. However, due to Monarch unveiling himself in deflagration, someone could have gotten video footage of him. The praise Monarch drops while akumatizing Lila, a fake photo is worth a thousand lies and it's an allusion to the quote from the Canadian writer Claude Jasmine, when a photo vote mille messages, meaning, a photo is worth a thousand lies. Now you know! This was one of the darkest episodes of Miraculous History, but hopefully in the next episode we will be able to understand that Lila is going to get her comeuppance as she will be exposed. Since this was a dark episode, we give this a plus ultra 100 out of 10. This episode of Miraculous Ladybug gets an 8 out of 10. The stakes are getting higher. Oh yeah, next time! Meme! <laughs> Meme! Upper- NANI?! <laughs> much for watching everyone what do you think if you appreciate it please be sure to super smash that like button and be sure to follow my social media platforms in the description below and in the team live lights fanned up channels please be sure to leave a comment below and please give us your open-minded thoughts because we here at team life lights fanned ups do not condone harassment violence or trolls allowed or otherwise Ren Hoek from Comedy Central to Ren and Stimpy Show will haunt you down till the ends of the Shadow World. Please be sure to subscribe to our videos and click the notification bell. You'll never miss a video the second it goes live on YouTube and Google. With that being said, thanks for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye bye <laughs> End of story. Bye-bye. See you later. I want to say... As myself, to everyone out there who's watching this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to Gabe and Natalie's YouTube channel. Uh, they're awesome, so check it out. That's so cool.